Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Ladies of Sosa podcast. My name is Sarah. And my name is Christine. And today we're going to be talking about the intersectionality between the South Sudanese experience in America and the Black American experience. And what actually inspired us to talk about this is because a lot of times when we discuss topics that are kind of outside the specifics of South Sudanese culture, it's just like general black culture, you can say. A lo- we get a lot of comments that say like, well, you guys are not necessarily black. You guys are African. And no, you guys can need to stay in your place. We kind of get commentary like that. So it kind of caused us to step caused me at least to step back and say okay so what is so what what does that mean i i think that we do some have some nuances to our experience as african women but i want to un- fully understand the nuances because i also feel like we have some sh- a lot of shared experiences they also say things like oh you guys are so americanized you have american accents so i feel like we get it from both from the south sudanese side yeah. and then also from the american side so it's like where do we fit in as third culture kids? Right. So we, our parents are from one culture. We've grown up in another culture. And we're kind of like right there in the middle as a third culture, yeah. which is like a combination. And of technically, we are African-American. Yes. Literally. But we have American citizenship. And well, we're African. Are we black? Because that that's the that's the question. Yes, no, 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 you black. We the blackest of the no, black. I know what you're saying. But that's because people yeah. say that Y'all are not black. Black American is specifically for the descendants of slaves. They yeah. didn't migrate from Africa as immigrants or refugees. So mm-hmm. w- let's just get into the topic. Let's get into the topic. <laughs> so. I want to read a comment that kind of like kind of frameworks this conversation and puts it into like, you know, perspective. Let's introduce the panel first and then I'll read the third. Okay, comment. we have an amazing panel with us panel. here today. So yeah. we're just gonna go around the table and have everyone introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Vida. I work as a teacher and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not by the shy today. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to say. Well, your um, skin is glowing, sis. Thank you. you look yeah, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And, we're and the people happy said to have they you. loved your natural hair on the mm. last episode. They're and like, you did Shut amazing. They were like, she came with the facts and the mm-hmm. point. Thank you guys. So. Them Sudanese hotels love your hair. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Period. Know. Oh, yeah. Sudanese yeah. hotels yeah. too? Yes. I didn't oh, even know wow. that. Your hair is okay. beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, thank you. We are so happy to have you. Yes. And Gianna, me and Gianna actually went to high school together. She is African American and, you know, we'll get into our story. I love this girl, but go ahead and introduce yourself first. Yes. So as she said, I'm Gianna. This is my first time doing a podcast. I am Sarah's friend from childhood basically yes so i'm excited to be here and share my perspective hey awesome and, and then, then we have a veteran yeah mm-hmm. i'll let you introduce ebony <laughs> no introduce ebony because we both know ebony we've known ebony the for illustrious a long time. Yes. Uh, the OG. gorgeous keto queen is back with us in the <laughs> studio today miss ebony i will let you introduce yourself hi my name is ebony i'm a full-time influencer and i'm so happy to be back we're happy to have you, sis. We're you look amazing. You. And next, Nyaliba. We haven't seen you in a while, sis. Where have you been? Working. Okay. <laughs> and what do you working. do? What do you do? School. I may. So y'all already know from the first episode, if y'all remember the OG episode of the relaunch. Yes. Um, I'm Nyaliba. I'm a registered nurse. And I'm currently working on my master's of psychiatric nurse practitioner program. So. Ooh. Okay, we getting into it. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Willie. I'm glad to be back. It's it's really been a while, so I'm excited to have this conversation. Awesome, and we loved and mi- we love and miss you always. Willie. Yes. yes, and what do you do, Willie? Just for our new treasury people. analyst. What does the treasury that? analyst do? I've always wanted to ask you. So um, it's banking for businesses, mm. and so like I make sure that their money movement is is going well. You know, um, like uh, with businesses, businesses work a lot with each other to you know to you know send each other money, product, and all of that. And I'm, I'm, my job is to make sure all of that goes smoothly. You know what? We have a financial literacy panel coming next shoot. So I really would, I would love, love to be part of that. Yes. For that. Yeah. You have to be, be great part for of that. It if you can. Yes. I will. Yes. So for in sure. short, you're a money movement manager. <laughs> <laughs> Triple M. Short. Well, Making sure no embezzlement well, is happening. Let Emmanuel you can call it that. No fraudulent activity. <laughs> 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 Emmanuel, but, yeah. 
Go uh, ahead. Uh, Manuel, uh, stand-up comedian, uh, TikToker, and also a door dasher, and also two <laughs> other jobs because the social media thing is going to work for me soon, but I got to start streaming. It's so. going to work out. It's going to work out. And music. You forgot the music, the music this time. Don't forget the music. <laughs> you forgot the music. Nah, because like, the music thing is separate from like my whole identity, so technically I want people to not know it's me. <laughs> oh. that's, that's like doing the guest features but for my sister. But they're going to know who you are. Are. Okay. Regardless. Yeah, but like my sister, you see my sister, she should be the face of that music. Okay. Also, shout out to to Blue Nile, Blue Nile. Blue Nile. and she's gonna be a part hey, of a band called Nile. Do, do you have noise. like a rapper name or or is this? <laughs> Don't talk about my rapper. Name. <laughs> no. no. So I'm, I'm Emmanuel is a full on <laughs> creative, and yes, it's gonna work out for you. I I see it for you, Emmanuel. I'm, I, I'm not just saying that because. I don't. I do lie sometimes, but not with you. <laughs> <laughs> I really do see the creative like industry working for that you. That just so. me out. I know. <laughs> I, I, I do sometimes be telling well, people what they want to hear. Your honesty, you know, sis. But like, I actually see Emmanuel as a full time creative. Yeah. I see skits for you, South Sudanese skits. I feel like just stay, keep your lane, stay in your lane. He has it. Yeah. Yeah, you have it. Like for sure, one hundred percent. Coming soon. Have but, you done stand up? Yeah, I've been doing stand up for two years. We need yeah. to go to one of his Already, shows. Uh, yeah, we everyone. should. A we should all show go support him. Before, but like for me, it's like stand up. Uh, my plan is to. Oh, you don't like having people no, 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 that you know. No, no, no. no. I'm, 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 I'm completely fine. I'm, I'm good at this. I do. I do this stand up shit. Okay, yeah, let me know. But my plan is to like rent out a theater and then um, shoot an actual. That's special. a that's okay. a fair point. You don't yeah. promote your stand up shows though, like. No. We, yeah. But we want to go. Send us a clip so yeah. we can include it. Oh, yeah, I yeah. want the podcast viewers to see you in your element, like that, actually doing stand up. So. But here's the thing, I, I want to keep that separate because I'm like, when people see my stand up, they're keep always everything like, separate. <laughs> separate, 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 separate. Nigga. Okay, well, we we'll let it grow together. You, okay, then, well, we tried. We tried to promote him, y'all. He don't want us to. He, he has big different personalities. Up, so. Right, we'll just keep, keep promoting him on our podcast, but he don't want to. He don't want us to go to his show. Yeah, let's just begin the podcast. Let's stop talking about me. I don't like this. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. All let's get right. into the topic. Well, Sarah okay. has a comment to read. So I have a comment that kind of puts this um, conversation into a, like a framework. Somebody, someone I believe they're african-american um her name is lat 7324 and i promise you this is not an attack we're just exploring your comment in the conversation because i actually was like wow i don't know if i agree or disagree but it made my mind turn a little bit mm -hmm. so she said and this is a comment that she made under um our video about why are black women not getting married in the same rate as white women or other races she said these people should only speak on South Sudanese marriages because they are extremely limited in their understanding of black American culture and especially as it relates to black American women. Being born here or coming here when you're young doesn't change your culture. You guys have a whole different culture that seems extremely patriarchal and male focused. Africans in general are marriage minded, period, regardless of the quality of marriage. An African men or woman can go home and get married. And she put home in quotations, going back, go back to Africa and get married. So what are you guys talking about? All the African men I know, if they don't have a white wife, they got a wife from their home country. Same for some woman here. This should be an African specific conversation. You can't jump in and out of black American culture. Mm. Ooh, shots fired. Ooh. <laughs> but you know what? That is interesting. Yeah. And I feel like we do need to dissect it because it's Black History Month. It's February. So what better time to discuss this than now? Yeah. And um, obviously, it is a topic of discussion. Sometimes I get confused because I'm like, what am I allowed and not allowed to say? Right. I've grown up in American culture. I relate to a lot both of, sides. you know, both sides. I know I'm not black American, but most of my friends growing up were black American. You know, I like to explain struggles. it like this. It's like we are in a cut. Are we, we're not a guest like white people are in hip hop, right? We are a cousin mm -hmm. in our auntie's house. Mm. That's where we're at. That's basically where we're in that. I feel like that's room. a perfect analogy. Yeah. 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 I agree. So what was she, I, I don't really understand what she was saying. What she's saying, like if, if you want a husband, just go back to Africa and stay out of black people's business. Is that what you're saying? For yeah. the passport girls. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because, I think because that comment was based off the, um, you know, why are black women least likely to get married? That episode, she was kind of, it was more centered towards that. But I think the overall thing is like, you guys need to speak in more, have a more nuanced conversation because you guys are not black American. I don't think that's fair. No. Mm -hmm. At no. all. No. Because... Yes, our cultures are different, but you guys experience the same things that we do out here. 
we're all black. I feel like this goes into the uh, the 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 experience of a uh, of the of the immigrant where each side is telling you that you don't fully belong. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. oh, you can't speak on African American stuff, and then you have people in Africa telling us like, oh, you can't speak on Africa stuff because you're not there. You didn't grow up. So like, ah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like. There, there's, it's like there's nowhere we actually fully belong, you know. Right. No, but, but I, think, I think that we're complaining at that point. We're being yeah. like little pussies because, like, let's be honest, with we've we've been accepted by more African Americans than the people that we rock with. No, I'm not saying like I'm not saying that they like uh, they don't accept us. Some of them accept us, but there's people who are like on. on I say on, most on, of them. I'm saying us. like on. Yeah, of course, I agree with you. But I'm saying like the the person that's commenting, it's like we yeah. have the same thing in Africa where people are like. Mm -hmm. Like you guys don't really know the African experience mm -hmm. because you're not oh, you're there. Too it's like, yeah, you're too Americanized. Yeah, and then so we have that both sides where it's like but you're not American enough. Money. <laughs> you know? no, but Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel no. there's someone who commented on our stuff that was South Sudanese when we were talking about the natural hair conversation and like natural hair in the workplace and the microaggressions, mm -hmm. and they were like, "You guys want to be American so bad, like mm -hmm. you know." So yeah, and, and, it's, he's and, and, right. it's, and it's true. At the same time, it's like we will really never find a place where we fully belong. Except with each other. Huh? With mm -hmm. each other. Especially yeah, yeah. The except, ones yeah, who except had with each other. Similar experiences mm -hmm. coming yeah. here to America yeah. with parents from Sudan and having to re identify our identities here and try mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you know, assimilate yeah. to yeah. the African American experience and yeah. also keep our customs from home. No, it's no, a no, niche to that we've all had to try to find. Yeah, exactly. Within third culture kids. Is exactly. Term, that's exactly what you're describing. Yeah. So it's like we're, we're our own community. At the end, because it's like we both we get both stuff from yes, <laughs> both exactly. sides. Yeah. So I totally you know, understand that. I don't think we're fully our own community. I think really where we're getting the most flashback is from older generations, because we're not going to hear a young person being like, "Oh, they're from this area, and I don't rock with them." Because they are. are. They're, 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 but we have that. They have. We've had that. Yeah. They they have. Have. yeah. yeah. We've had that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the comments, <laughs> they've been saying yeah. okay, that. Who do y'all consider young? People our age group. Yeah, like, yeah. people are younger. We're no, not, people our age not, 30 and young. under is young. We, we, I mean, we, think we, about the people young. we went to school with. We, we're not young. We, we I'm talking nice. about our experience. Like, uh, at the end of the day, this new generation is slightly different. I've had this conversation with my little brother all the time. They're, they're not having these kind of conversations. They're looking up to us, and they are. Like, he's, he's 14, and he's telling me these things, but they're not was, going was through the same Was he born here? Experience. My little brother? Yes, he was. He was born here. See, that's what I'm but, saying. That's a different experience. But it's from, still not because he's, he's still speaking. There, he's still the doing the evolution. All the you right? know, he's but a like different the, age. The, he's the, younger. The, the us that came from like from back home. I think even our little, parents I have think different we're expectations pussies. on I think us. We're being right? Pussies. I yeah. Think we're no, we're not. We're and not. we actually do. Along with the financial literacy, we have a whole panel coming where we're going to have someone who's like 18 who has grown up with the parent that South Sudanese who grew up in America mm. to explain like the nuances of how our parents came straight from South Sudan or Sudan and raised mm -hmm. us here. What is it like having a parent who grew, grew up, up here? here, which is what we're about to be. We're about to raise kids having right. grown up here. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a whole different dynamic as well. Absolutely. But are we, I want to ask the panel, are we allowed as African directly coming from Africa to refer to ourselves as black. Is that something that we can we can, we can, we can say join we're black. in on? Or do we need to strictly say that we're African? By definition, we're black. Like, yes, we're like nobody black. owns that, the word black. I, I, think, I think reparations so, yeah. should be different for African Americans compared to us because we just got here. No, we don't they need deserve reparations. But you most know of reparations. I'm going to tell you this right now. We shouldn't even be in the conversation of reparations we rep because reparations we're not descendants yeah, of slavery. Yeah, we're not descendants of slavery. But they so deserve least, it. But, but we like, need our like, reparations from the how we were colonized in Africa. Yeah, we can get reparations from France and Britain and them, but we don't need to get <laughs> reparations here at all yeah we'll, we'll well, never okay. get it we don't deserve it at all because, okay but well, but like but like let's, like I, do we can we call like like were you guys asking like are we allowed to call ourselves black yes sure. black is we're all black, black. We're no matter where you go you're still gonna get called a, a, a yeah. bead a, a, a negro no matter where you're at you're exactly. still gonna be black about, as fuck like let's can i ask this question i think this will narrow it down a little bit more are what are the nuances and or parallels to the South Sudanese or African with the black American experience. Mm -hmm. So what is like, what are some either parallels that are like, we have similarities or commonalities or completely different nuances. That's, well, I, think I know it. that when I was growing up, most of my friends were African. And when I would say like 
stuff about black people. They're like, oh, no, I'm not black. I'm African. And our parents would say that, too. I would hear their parents say the word Akata, like, towards Mm. Mm. black people. So I think it's just, I just don't think that our generation feels like that. I think it's the older generation that really feels Mm -hmm. like the separation more just because they were immigrants coming over here and you guys weren't you guys grew up here what ebony is saying that's such an important point because a lot of people bring up what you said that they personally growing up have received pushback from the african community and were excluded and the slurs such as akata and things of that nature so i feel like that's really important that you're bringing that up because Mm -hmm. that's part of the divide between the diaspora wars where Africans basically say we were bullied and you guys made fun of us. And then you guys say you guys think you're better than us and you othered us and called us akatas and said that we don't know our culture and where we're from. So now we're really getting into what is like underneath it all. Yeah. And what is it? What is what causes the separation? What makes us feel like we are different? Colonial brainwashing. Like, let's be honest with ourselves. What media are we both consuming Mm -hmm. about each other? Think about how they look. We are able to look at each other. One, people in Africa are looking at African-Americans and all they see is drug dealing, guns, and all these other things. And then when they're looking at Africans, they're seeing destitute Africans that can't even get themselves out of the area that they're at. But but even outside of, like, the media, because I agree with you 100% that there is I kind of disagree because us growing up as black kids, when we see the African children, we're like, oh, they're all going to be doctors, lawyers. Like I was exactly thinking You know that. what I mean? Yes. I'm on the other side. Like, and I've never felt othered. Sorry. Yeah. I've never felt othered by African people. I've always felt, like, more included. And, and I think mm-hmm. that is the reason why people would make fun of, like, the black American kids would make fun of the African kids because Out of they Delphi. were always mm-hmm. smarter and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I saw another one at... I saw another episode that you guys had and it brought me to tears. One of my childhood best friends got on here talking about how she was bullied so bad to the point where she wanted to bleach her skin. And I'm just like, Oh my God, they they really did that to her. Like, and that was messed up. Mm -hmm. And now they're all in her DMS because she's a model now. Like, right. Mm-hmm. And at and the time as kids, it's like, Oh, it's jokes and stuff. But that really hits home differently, mm-hmm. yeah. especially for girls when your looks are such an important part of your identity at that age because you're Absolutely. just now yep. coming into yourself but, yeah. and trying to figure out who you are. Mm-hmm. So it, it really psychologically damages you. I, th- I, I don't want to come off as like insensitive or anything, but I think we all need to understand that like kids are horrible to each other. <laughs> of any yeah. race and, that's yeah. and any color. Yeah. Yeah. Kids yeah. Does not up. exist. That's another kids are messed up. Like, <laughs> Like, the things that kids do to each other in middle school and high school and elementary school, it's horrible because they don't know any better. They don't yeah. know the effects that they have on each mm-hmm. other for life. You know, they're, they're just surviving. They're, so, they're usually a reflection of their kid, their parents' mm-hmm. private life. Yeah. So a lot of these kids are just I, I viewing think, what their parents I, I think parents don't even know how cruel kids are to each other sometimes. And it's, it's just part of the growing up as a kid. Because mm-hmm. I think everybody has a, remembers being bullied. Mm. but you know i think a lot of a lot of times we don't remember doing it to other people we remember what they did to us mm. right you know because our childhood like we think about that stuff a lot no, i know i wasn't but, bullying anybody so were the kids were the kids <laughs> <laughs> the, Listen, i was oh, not God. bullying anybody. <laughs> but, but were the kids like ha ha you're so white mm. you're so light-skinned ha 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 mm. Like, well, yes, they, they were. I'm just asking. Yes, asking. They, yes, they were. Because we used to talk about, about ginger, homie. You, it we're happens. Like, I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But everybody's yeah. experience is I'm, different, among, mm-hmm. among Among men, it is. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We do that. Guys, will, guys, like, if you're, like, okay. will disqualify a light-skinned guy, like, no, you're not really. Yes, I, I, I agree. That black is true. Like <laughs> so, like, I, mean, you don't... I say that because <laughs> what it, like when we were talking about colorism, there mm. was some African American people. Shout out to our Af- African American audience who was like, "Well, we roast y'all. It's a form of endearment. Like we're not being for." But we're at not the being time, we don't know oh, that. Oh my god, that's so toxic. <laughs> that is so toxic. Okay, that. so no, no, time out, time out, time out. This is where I think men and women are pretty different. So like he, like he put it out to the point. Like so, being like in a, in a locker room or being with a whole bunch of dudes, we are vicious and mean to each other for a reason it's kind of like you built up the immunity amongst your boys so that when the world actually hits you with some real shit you're not it's like you're not hurt mm-hmm. like what, what, what I've, I've heard worse oh, okay. from my homie okay. like we my own it's, it's not even it's, it's not hazing hazing is specifically done to people that physically. you don't like it's really so it's physical. not colorism it's 
No, 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 no. Here's the thing. What's done to the women is different. That's okay. that's okay. that's Sounds what good. y'all what y'all go through is very different. The dark skinned black American girls got bullied too. It comes down to colorism as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Honestly, I felt more othered and more like pushed aside by black American women than anyone else. Not mm-hmm. saying not to perpetuate that trope of angry black woman or mean black woman, but when I met Sarah in high school, she was my first best friend. All the way up until high school, I had never had a close friend that was black. Sarah was the first one, and she's African. So I've never had the experience where I was bullied by African people or felt other. Like, this is my first time ever hearing that term that's derogatory towards black people. Mm. Oh, the so, Yakata mm, term? Yeah, mm. this is my first time ever hearing I've, I've that. I've never heard that either. Oh, yeah. Let's be honest, a, that's a West African term, and it's not yeah. to separate that's East yeah. Africans versus West Africans. Mm-hmm. But there yeah, is, we don't use that yeah. word. There is a little bit more tension when it comes to these specific issues when it comes to West Africans and African Americans because there is historical context. Yeah, mm-hmm. to become, they're in closer proximity. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah, for sure. Especially when you talk um, about slavery. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of Africans don't understand the African American experience. Mm. Like, the like um I, I I I never knew until I came here and started learning the history of what happened here. Like all the way from the end of slavery, Jim Crow laws, mm-hmm. redlining, you know, the civil rights movement, mm-hmm. um, you know, the uh, uh the pipeline from you know from the school to prison pipeline. Mm-hmm. The prison like, industrial complex. Yeah, yeah like mm-hmm. all of this stuff, I don't think Africans have <clears throat> an idea of all these things that are put against African Americans right. to be to, to become successful. Like even even the Africans that are brought here, we're brought and we're put into like nicer neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Like I'll, I'll I'll like you know we're, we're not we're not they don't put us in Southside Chicago in like the worst neighborhoods Mm-mm. where you literally have to get a gun to survive. You know where you have to like you're fighting for your life. They put us in nice neighborhoods and then talk about the churches how they will indoctrinate you into literal conversations that you would never have if you actually knew the black side of the exactly. situation. Exactly, how white people are nicer to Africans than African Americans. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, That's not true, a good nice There's this because... kid who wrote a book about how yeah. he went to to like a um, boarding school and he was African American and he pretended to be African mm. to be accepted and they were they and they were and they loved and accepted him when he was an African, made up an accent and everything. And then yeah, literally. And then once they found out that he made all that up they, you know, they yeah. they marginalize them yeah. again. They realize, oh, yeah. oh my God. No, yeah. that's such a great fact yeah. because the, the charity that is given to Africans yeah. through these, like, even like you know, religious organizations and just like philanthropy, it's like we got to help these people in Africa, and that's a, other, that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation <laughs> in itself. That's that a whole white savior conversation complex. in itself, yeah. but we receive like a sympathetic. Yeah. Lens on so us. so acknowledge the fact that that happens over here in the United States, but then you have the mirror on the other side. If you're African American and you go to uh, these other countries, especially in uh, these Muslim countries, these European countries, if you have that American visa, it's different. Yeah. Compared mm-hmm. to if you're just Sudanese if going just, to this place. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you're not, absolutely. You're not like, having the same experience. About that too. Remember mm-hmm. how we said in when, when African Americans go to Egypt, because a lot of African Americans said like, they did experience racism, but they didn't experience it the experience it to the extent of South Sudanese. Yeah. The visa, the American visa hits differently. How yeah. interesting. Yeah. That nuance, yeah, the conversation mm-hmm. is very nuanced. Because I feel like it's so why we're we're here right now. But you just like brought a up a great point. Um mm-hmm. and my mom actually, she's worked for what you, what you just described as those religious organizations. Yeah. So she's been involved in helping with immigration and refugee services since I was like six or seven years old. So I can see what Willie was saying when he speaks on how white people are a lot more hospitable to Africans. And I feel like that has to do with the history of slavery because they know when they're dealing with a black American, there's going to be a lot of tension there sometimes because of the underlying history of slavery. Yeah. But when you deal with an African, they're coming here from probably a war-torn country, so they're just happy to be here, and they don't have as much pushback. Yeah. So it's easier for us to just go along to get along in the corporate mm-hmm. environment or workplace versus if you're with a black American person, mm-hmm. you're like, nope, I know my rights. I know what you did, my ancestors, and I'm going to speak up for myself. Right. Where an African is like, 
I'm happy to be here. Mm -hmm. I just want to get as much education as possible. I just want to make money so I can send money back home to my family. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Like, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a a fine line because we have to be careful not to use that like advantage to look down on other Black people who are in America. Someone left a comment that really hit me. They were like, (laughs) when it comes to immigration, Black people fought for African people to be able to come here. To as do. immigrants, they oh. they fought for the United States to allow. They're us still to come fighting. Here. They're, They're still, still fighting, fighting to this and day. They have said in the comments that they felt like that was the worst mistake they ever made because they mm. felt like we are not appreciative. They thought we were coming over here to help them in their fight against like systemic oppression and racism mm-hmm. and everything that they were going through. And they felt like when we came here, we kind of turned a blind eye to it and mm. kind of joined up with the oppressors and like buddy buddy with the white people yeah. when it comes to the affirmative action or programs that they have like universities yeah. offer and like mm-hmm. all kind of yeah. things like mm-hmm. Africans most of the time benefit a lot from yeah. that as opposed to black who, Americans like, with who, descendants who, of slavery who, who that's for. created for yeah. Yeah. yeah that's another point of tension yeah. I yeah, think I, I think it's I can speak from it from a, a person who whose brothers and sisters have benefited from this specific conversation because like let's be honest with ourselves here my brothers and sisters uh, are athletes right but they got blessed to be able to go to private schools mm. and be able to show out and do their thing right and then we had conversations with him and his homies who were on the same school and they both experienced the same level of like you know racism and stuff in that school. But one of the friends left for another private school that was all black. My brother stayed. I don't know why, because his parents were like, at the end of the day, I know this racism is bad. They're going to get you to a place that's way better. And the connections that he gets from this school. I probably shouldn't say this because this is this does not look good in general. But like it's the truth of it is like as Africans, we're able to get these conversations with certain people that we shouldn't get. But because we're, eh, it is good. Eh, hey, yeah, the white no, man. I don't want to yeah. say I mean, shit. That's how you get that higher education. Work hard. Like, like, let's not get yeah, that. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to make it like, like we're Africans coming don't. from yeah. no, no section, no government assistance, nothing. Like, if you're, mm-hmm. if you don't have it, you, you feed the children. You see, like, when you're poor in Africa, it hits different than being poor in America. America. And sometimes oh, being poor in America is amazing. Sometimes it makes you feel like <laughs> because there's still <laughs> people willing Africa. to help you, and there's still resources yeah. for you. You still eat. Yeah, yes. but we but we get the resources. <laughs> no, no, but we get resources that uh, most African Americans aren't getting these resources Ex- yeah. because they see us as like the most leverageable charity case ever. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I feel like sometimes it is like um, like the oppression war sometimes mm-hmm. a little bit because Africans we have been through a lot too. We've been through. It's not the same exact experience, but it's similar. Right. It's just a, like a different like point of time. But this is like, their country. Us us uh, us. Africans have been through colonialism. Our country? Mm-hmm. Colonialism mm-hmm. within our. But y'all built this country. Don't, don't, don't even play like that. Okay, like okay. black. If it wasn't for African Americans in the country of the United States, they would never have a United States. So no, no, I, no, I, no. I, they ain't finna play with y'all. Like y'all ain't did this fucking thing. I yeah. that shit be don't making me so mad. Don't play with African Americans. Like they built it. The whole White House should be called okay, the Black right, House. Okay. They did okay. their fucking thing. All right, really back in. Really back in. Really back in. Really back in. Bring it down. From what I think. It sounds like you're speaking. Wait, wait, Ebony, did he come for you? <laughs> no. He tried to defend uh, her aggressively. Oh, no, I was defending her. Like, this this okay. is your land. This You, you build this. Man, fuck mm-hmm. out of here. Okay, so so I feel like sometimes it is like a oppression wars when mm-hmm. it comes to like the diaspora wars because Africans have been through a lot. A lot of our countries have been through a history of colonialism and that is slavery in some capacity honestly they take um, it and they're still, no, they're still there sure. they, they, that is not no. slavery no it's well, not slavery it's not necessarily <laughs> slavery but they they use they utilize the people steal their resources mm-hmm. that's why africa literally, is so poor africa yeah. is like literally yeah, yeah they has, had they had like concentration camps in africa they don't speak about that yeah but mm-hmm. they had concentration camps in africa right like they had uh they forced people to to the reason i'm saying it's not slavery because it's not the same. I'm saying it's not she the same. Yeah, chattel thing. slavery. That was here yeah. where it was just based on, you know, I'm saying, like, insane. I'm saying but, I, but I'm saying like the, the but I do agree with you. Like um None of the in, in, we didn't agree sides, we didn't agree to any of it. On both sides we we don't we don't understand that the, what other pe- the person the other people went through is the same thing that we went through in a in a mm-hmm. in a different way. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people don't understand like uh, a lot of African Americans don't understand like um, in Africa, colonization 
was so bad where they were if you if you're not refusing if you refuse to work like for example in uh, what Belgium did to Congo King yeah. Leopold they were, yeah King Leopold they were cutting off the hands of your kids and and mm -hmm. your uh, and say what it was but the holocaust that, but is that happened that not in Congo slavery? Yeah. Huh? you're for you're it forced is. to work in your it own is. country it is. It is. and it is. like it is. and and they mine. and literally but, but, yes but, but, mine, and but, take but, your hold on take but, your take the resources of your country to build Belgium I do agree with you what i'm saying is like the slavery there was not the slavery here. Because, yeah, exactly. Because this is generational slavery. Right. Like yeah. African Americans have been more, they've spent more time as slaves in America than they have spent as free. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, by the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like, we don't think about that a lot sometimes. <laughs> you know? Ooh, Imagine don't. just generation of generation of, of, your, of your kids being taken away from you, yeah. getting, went, getting sold off. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, sometimes we don't really understand. But I mm -hmm. do agree with you. Like, um, colonization was horrible in its own way like if if you actually dig deep into it mm -hmm. and it's still and it, and how it still has an effect on africa and why mm -hmm. it is the way it is yeah so mm -hmm. both sides we really don't understand each other mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, and I, why right. so we just assume the other person yeah. is unappreciative or you know mm -hmm. uh, ungrateful or whatever looks down on us or whatever i think we just need to understand each other's uh, experience a lot more so i recently just did my ancestry mm -hmm. and it came back and i'm like 96% African. And I, I asked one of my African friends. Oh my gosh. I asked that is actually friends. impressive. I'm like, so can I say that I'm African? Yes. Like, yes. 96%. You, yeah. Wait, no, all African Americans can say they're African. No. You that, well, so. that's an A plus. <laughs> it is. Hey, we got cousins that ain't even 90, 90 yeah. nothing. There like, you they, go. They're 90 they're plus. Yeah, they're they're in the 70s? They, okay. No, they ain't even in the 70s. They about. That's beautiful. Stop. Stop. That, yeah, that is a huge percent. That yeah. is impressive. That's, yeah, I had like one percent like Norway and mm. like Wales or something like that. Oh, but yeah, what well, part of giving luxury? Cameroon. Cameroon. Oh, okay. Cameroon. Oh yeah, shout out to our Cameroonian. Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples. <gasps> okay. okay. Really? You're Congolese, okay? <laughs> Do you have like a hip wine? Are you good with your, your hips? Do you I dance know. with your hips? Uh -huh. Come on, have you I, I thought it was Ebony, genetic. I'm about to tell our Congolese friend that we met. Remember the Congolese friend? I'm about to be like, Ebony Congolese. <laughs> kept the Cameroonians into the chat. Let, let me tell you this right now. You're about to get crazy DMs. From the Ivorians, the oh, Cameroonians. Yes. Listen, they're popping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. popping. That's so beautiful. But just to bring it to you guys, when we talk about affirmative action and DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, all of these programs that Africans, I'm not going to lie, we take advantage of these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel sometimes slighted or do you feel like it's not fair? No, I don't feel like it's not fair because I think these things would require people that are educating themselves mm -hmm. on them. So if you're not educating yourself on these things, then how do you expect to take advantage of them? Mm. We can't fault, fault people for taking advantages and taking these opportunities and running with them. I mean, it's there for you too if you want it. I understand that's some bootstrapping crap. Like that sounds mm -hmm. real messed up, but I cannot fault African people for coming here and being like, I see these opportunities. I see all I have to do is educate myself and put myself in these spaces and feel like they're sliding me when I can go put myself in those same spaces. Yeah, like yeah. if you you if you could put yourself in that room and have conversations just like Emmanuel was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. how his brother or someone decided to stay at that school because they see there's opportunity there. They're putting mm -hmm. themselves in those rooms to make connections with those people to make their lives better in the end. Yeah. You, you can't fault anybody yeah. for that. But and do you guys if I, I if I knew how things worked back when I was in college. Yeah, I'd mm -hmm. be in a completely I, different space. I, I did college all the way wrong. Do all you the think way exactly? Wrong. Like, uh, that, I have a question for you guys. Do you, do you guys feel like some of those resources which are meant for African Americans are not direct, like, are not directed correctly? Because, um, no, I think that people are not doing research. But, but are you blaming them for not being able to do research? Like, yeah. Wait, well, how can, oh, wait, 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 wait. Can, can we can well, we acknowledge something well, hold like on, Willie, if you're the, a kid, the term African American is broad because we are African American mm -hmm. technically. Which, uh, Black Americans because you we have know, we have know, our mm -hmm. African we're, citizenship. We're not so African Americans. We, we fall under that program. We are program. Sudanese Americans. No, we're we're Africans. African Americans. Well, honestly, I, no. I think, no. I think we're Africans. Africans. I take that back. I take that back. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can fault somebody for not knowing mm -hmm. how to research. Yeah, no, exactly. Like if 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 you have never had anybody in your life 
a positive influence to tell you like yeah. mm-hmm. so you need to go to college or you to need me, to influence like mm-hmm. i can't fault myself for like i said doing college completely wrong because mm-hmm. i didn't know yeah that so, was you, yeah yeah so you didn't know no. any better yeah it, 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 after you did it that's when you realize mm-hmm. oh my god i could have you know Network. but if you had somebody telling you maybe you'd have done it differently right? yeah. so i want to get vita in the conversation because you are in education oh hell yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. so you know, not trying to put you on the oh, spot no. or nothing. <laughs> Thank but, you. Um, because you are in education, um, I want to. We want to get your like perspective on that. Do you feel like a lot of programs that are directed towards Black people in America, um, African people indirectly or directly benefit from programs that are essentially supposed to benefit the Af- Black American? What I will say is the education system in America at large is has a lot of flaws that I've seen just by being a teacher. Um, There's so many issues. And the schools that my organization puts us in are schools that lack in a lot of, like, staff and supports and funding. Um, I know, like, in the school that I work at, there's a lot of gaps. So think about kids that are not reading on grade level or Mm -hmm. several grade levels. Mm. And so by the time they get to eighth grade, They might be on a fourth grade reading level. So by the time they get to graduate high school, because we're going to push them forward, because that's what we do. Mm. Um, No child left behind, LOL. Mm. But (laughs) we're going to push them forward, but these kids are not prepared. Like, even if you have a high school degree, you are not going to be prepared for college because Mm. you are Mm. not able to conceptualize the texture reading. You're not able to engage in conversations that you should be at that age. So it's really... A lot. And I think it's really sad what's going on in this country with just the literacy crisis. Mm-hmm. People cannot read. There's a whole TikToker. He's um, a black man. Mm-hmm. I think he, and he's documenting. He's a truck driver, I think, as well. I forgot his name, but he's like documenting his journey as someone who's learning how to read as an adult. And his mind is like going through so many different things because things that you should have been going through when you were developing, mm-hmm. you know, thoughts and, you know, interacting with words are happening to him as an adult. So and my heart breaks, you know, mm-hmm. a lot every day, just imagining the futures of these kids that have all these gaps that are getting pushed along. And then let's say they actually want to go to college. They're not going to be ready for college. Or you like, I remember when I was in school, um, you would see all these people freshman year and then you wouldn't see them for a variety of reasons. But like just imagining. And also when I was in school, a lot of there wasn't a lot of black men in school. I noticed that I would go to events, a lot of black, like black events, a lot of black women. But I'm like, where the men at? And not on some, <laughs> like, right. not on some, where the men at? But like, really, like, where are, you know, where are our black men? And so just seeing, like, advancing in these spaces and not mm-hmm. seeing enough of our counterparts in those spaces mm-hmm. really was something that I noticed. So I think the literacy gap is the reason why there's so many, there's so much missing people from the conversation they're not i don't think enough research can get them into the right space when in reality they're not they haven't been prepared they're not prepared so you teach fourth grade mm-hmm. and i would assume you're in a low socioeconomic mm-hmm. uh like area neighborhood so what part of dallas do you teach in if you don't mind me asking? i teach in richardson okay mm-hmm. We never oh, what Richardson, Richardson School? I, I went to Richardson I School. Went to Richardson. We don't need to put her Richardson. business out there. No, I don't like that. Like every oh, district has its <laughs> good parts in it. If it's Forest Ridge, that's the best school in the game. Let me. Well, we don't want to put out where she works. Yeah. But yeah. about Forest Ridge alumni. But what really just concerns me is literacy gaps, and just not enough being done to bridge it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also like feeling like I'm in this fight by myself, like not getting enough support to mm-hmm. help them really. To, to help them have, like, a good foundation to move on to the next step. And that's why a lot of teachers are not staying in education, I'm pretty sure, yeah. because it's kind of like you are doing so much, but then you realize I, I can't, I can only do so much right. mm-hmm. yeah. to bridge the gap mm-hmm. yeah. and just mm-hmm. trying to make sure they get enough or, like, have a love of learning so that when, because I feel like that love is going to be something that's going to maintain them. So, mm-hmm. like, Absolutely. even yeah. though you mm-hmm. might not read on a yeah. fourth grade level by the time you go to fifth grade, you're going to love learning so much. You're going to yeah, try. You you're yeah. going to try after fourth grade, fifth grade, after high school. They're going to say you can't do it, but you're going to keep trying. Yeah. So I feel like just building that love of learning and li- like reading for them. I mean, I hope that that's enough for them yeah. at the end of the day. And, but, and, like, uh, and the crazy thing about that is like that, that early childhood education is so important. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like I know adults who, who, who want so bad to do well, but like they didn't have that early childhood 
uh, education. Mm-hmm. Like there's, they're having issues with literacy and everything. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they literally can't, can't do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, and it, and it was only because they didn't have the opportunity early on in their life. It's not like a lack of, uh, a lack of effort or a lack mm-hmm. of, uh, shout out to our parents. Cause yeah. some, I, cause <laughs> yeah. Shout exactly. out to it immigrant to, parents because mm-hmm. they came. My par- no one has fostered the love of education like my parents in my life. They yeah, love exactly. they love education in my family. That is such a good even point. before they got their education. My dad would tell me he would take classes at the community college um, once or twice a week when I was mm-hmm. in high school. He's like, even if I don't, if you graduate before me, I'm still going to be doing this. Mm-hmm. And I just love how he loved it and like. It was genuine love, not like, mm-hmm. I'm going to make you do it. I don't care about it. But, like, mm-hmm. he actually loved education. Can we and, talk about culture? Yeah. Because one thing you said is about, um, like, from that early age or whatever. But mm-hmm. I think, I don't know who on the panel said something about how, like, Africa. It was Ebony talking about how in our culture, education is everything. Like, mm-hmm. you're expected to excel B's are not acceptable. C's are not acceptable. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. for us, it is being, it's not like a thing of like, oh, is it cool or not to, you have to be smart if you mm-hmm. want your parents to be happy with you. Can I, can I put a pause on school? that? Because I, I say there's a lot of African-American communities yeah. that are just like that. that a, lot of, a, a lot of the elder communities, especially those kids that like grew up in affluent areas, their parents were the same way where they were. When I was growing up, it was not cool to be smart in school. We were in the hood. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But that's what you I'm were in these private. Is that not the same thing for African Americans? Can no, I, no, my, my, no. Your parents valued education. No. Oh, they didn't. No, my parents are not educated. Like my parents are amazing people. Mm. They, my parents never had degrees. But, I'm the first. I'm the first person in my family to graduate. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so that's amazing. You, I'm that's curious. An amazing I'm accomplishment. curious. Did they ever like? And Kurt push you to ha- get a degree or like no. and Kurt, okay so that wasn't like a theme no. they, they can't if they haven't like it's hard for if them to do it, it if they haven't done it themselves mm-hmm. what Ebony did somebody from the branching family like branching it. out and then they can do that for them for the other kids but it's hard to do that when you don't have when you don't have that a framework I yeah. don't think mm-hmm. I would have graduated college if I didn't have my dad my dad graduated from college and mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I same. think earlier on I was getting A's to impress him it wasn't even for myself mm-hmm. yeah. even our, as our parents being immigrants when they came here they're like our kids are going to school mm-hmm. yeah. Gonna, uh-huh. yeah exactly you're going that's why you're, that's why you're here exactly. that's why they fought exactly. that hard yeah. but yeah. i wonder yeah. if like because i feel like the way it was framed for me like education was like liberation like this is mm-hmm. how we're gonna, yes like yeah. i remember like when i graduated just mm-hmm. high school mm-hmm. my aunt she was just like you're gonna you're gonna go to college and mm-hmm. you're gonna uh you're gonna steal their education you're gonna go back mm-hmm. and you're gonna fix your country <laughs> and i'm like okay auntie like she yeah. just that makes sense it was such a big deal so i wonder like for african americans like do you guys have you, in your experiences, seen education as liberation, or have y'all been like they're not going to free us just because we have education? Or like, so the reason why I went to school in the first place is because my teachers were pushing it, not mm. not my family. And the reason why I got my master's degree was because I didn't know what I was going to do after college. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't because I, this was expected of me. It was because I didn't know what was going on, and I applied for jobs after I got my bachelor's. Nobody wants to hire me. Okay, let me get my master's. Going about that, that's com- the completely wrong way too because now I got my master's. Nobody wants to hire me either because I have no experience. So, mm. yeah. So, my experience is just a bunch of not knowing. Girl, that's crazy anything. where you get a whole master's and you're just like, that's, that's yeah, what I do I'm is. just casually the smartest, right? baddest bitch in the game. You'd be surprised because a lot of that happens you, too. Have you tried mm-hmm. faking your resume? No, no. Some it works. Put, put in some extra stuff. Is that how you became, became treasure? Hey, it works. <laughs> oh, works. They don't check. I'm telling you. Oh, my nigga, hey. Game. At the but end of the day, like we still that, finesse. That just <laughs> brings do what it you all do. together because, like you said, the expectations. You wanted to go to school and get degrees because your parents did mm-hmm. it. Like, my mom and dad went to university. So, for me, it was like, that's the bare minimum just for me to go get a bachelor's. That's not like you're even doing anything special. That's like, all right, well, you got that out the way. That's the, so what's the basics. Next? What's mm. what's after this? You know, mm. you know what was Why embarrassing like in college? <laughs> Presenting after, well, you go and present first, like me, and then the African group presents after you. That's embarrassing. <laughs> even if even if English is not their first language, they make it work. And I <laughs> and I really want to dive into like, but why though? Because we're 
all so we it's not like Africans are smarter than no, black. No, it's not. Afri- not even Africans. close. It's, it's, not. Not, it's, not. it's <laughs> because because we've been coddled to be able to succeed. And I know it sounds like weird when I say coddled. I think coddled's the wrong I, I, word. I, 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 we've been conditioned. Like, we've been, we can, no. we, yeah, we be conditioned. Conditioned, my nigga. Yeah. My bad. I be on my I be on my. She bullshit. said the men have. The men have been coddled. Yeah. Uh, whatever. whatever. We're not doing that. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay so I, I think we, the, just, the, we have a, a great storm of stuff that just makes sense. Like, our stories always sound great. It's like the same thing when you have athletes that are, like, he went from a poor place. They just love our stories because you're African. Mm-hmm. You come from. Nothing. So the scholarships are going to be pouring in like milk, Mm. like rain. You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen. It's just so much easier to deal with somebody who's never understood how the system beats down black people until later on in life. Like Mm. uh, most black people, like recently, I've been like, God damn, man, this shit been hurting my whole life because I got here when I was a kid. So I remember the shit that I went through. But like for those that just come here and get their education, they don't understand that. Mm-hmm. So they think, oh no, African Americans is just lazy. This shit is just happening. So it's that kind of situation. It's a perfect storm. It's systematic. Yeah. The same way that when, when African Americans go back to Africa, they can instantly start a business, get money, and get bands mm-hmm. like that. Really? I have a question. Like, my my you uh, can. Actually, I tell my black people, go on, go back to Africa and yeah. get you your money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Coming on that. Um I've always my brothers and I have always talked about that. It's like like Sometimes I think you need a little bit of empathy to understand that's mm-hmm. like, okay, let's let's say, for example, instead of your how life turned out for you, let's say you were born in Southside Chicago in one of those bad neighborhoods. Do you really think your life would have turned out the same? Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. answer is no. It's like you would have probably been a shooter just like everybody else in that mm-hmm. in that neighborhood. Omaha, Nebraska and is a prime then, example. Exactly. The Sunnis. Exactly. Every, every, exactly. Sunnis, yeah. It's like like perfect example it's like where you end up in life has a lot to do with mm-hmm. how you where how you started. turn out mm-hmm. yeah. the people yeah. around you has a lot to do with how you turn mm-hmm. out because the voices start when you're young right. when you're when you're a kid when you're in fourth grade like early on you know the early education like those voices start there and so you've already pictured what you're going to do in life based on the people around you and the expectations of you no 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 four year old or mm-hmm. five year old is like i want to go to college and be successful Absolutely. No. They're Absolutely. like, mom wants me to go to college or mm-hmm. dad wants me to go to college. It's yep. a it's a school to prison pipe. Yeah. I did not. Yeah. I it's yeah. the prison industrial complex. Wait, yeah. wait, what are you talking about here? Like, yeah. It's specific. That's it's a, it's literally a free slave labor because they pay them like pennies mm-hmm. and, yeah. they, and, get them, and get they they work, work in prison. Yeah. What people mm-hmm. don't know, yeah. they work in prison and they produce products and stuff and for they get companies. paid like pennies for it. So I yeah. I definitely knew that. You can like, invest you know, in prison stocks. Yeah, yeah. you can. I mean, didn't. When we really break it down, we can kind of see how we share a lot of the same struggles. Mm-hmm. And I think conversations like this help us to be able to bridge that graph and to see that we're suffering in a lot of the same ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. we're not benefiting from fighting amongst each other. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I think even with, with this YouTube video, you probably have some Africans who are like, they bullied me. They called me this. They called me that. And it's like shut your complaining ass. The no, fuck that's up. very no, valid. That's real though. No, no, I'm a, I'm a I, no. I'm like, can I say because, something? No, can no, I say? No, I'm gonna be real. I, mean, I feel like you hmm? you beat up yeah. a lot on no, no. Africans. And, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I understand that. I'm, I'm not saying the same thing to the African Americans. Stop being pussy. What I'm saying is like I'm not gonna be as rough as Emmanuel. Emmanuel's teed up right now. If you need therapy, go seek therapy. But understand that. Understand that yeah. it's kids. Yeah. Kids are cruel to each other. Yeah. It wasn't because they're African Americans mm-hmm. or it wasn't because they're Mexican or whatever. Whatever like situation that you grew up in, bullying has been going on for, for decades. Yeah. And like kids are they don't understand, you know? So they're yeah. assholes to each other. Kids and are And I and kids I also want to say this. He basically because... says stop being a pussy. Stand on business, nigga. Stand Come on, on love yourself. No, no, no. I also want to say this because I have my... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have my best friend, one of my best friends from high school, Gianna, on the panel, who is African-American. Yes. And, you know, as much as, like, my experience, and I'm sure a lot of African people's, dark-skinned people's experience was, like, yeah, I did get bullied in middle school, high school, um, but I also got shown love in high school through African-Americans. And Gianna was one of those people who always showed me love and and always like you always told me like i was an african queen like i was so beautiful i was like girl what (laughs) gorgeous gorgeous she was beautiful and that means the only person i've ever seen 
she always like always exuded not to fetishize that you. towards me. Like she always <laughs> told me I was for it. And I'm like, girl, you are literally like the Megan Good of this high school. Period. Like the, yeah. the, 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 she it. had the short haircut too. The boys loved her. <laughs> Listen, she school? did. She was literally Megan Good of our high school. Like you had the whole it. haircut, <laughs> everything. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna put a picture. Ooh, see picture. Wait, she had the pixie cut. Like see, the, oh. she did. She did. Ooh, no, she but, had a pixie cut. He really, yeah, yeah. Was I was no, but the fact that she was like she. So I can't. It's quick for us to be like, yeah black people or african-american people bullied me but then at the same time are we also going to say like there was a lot of african-american women who actually showed me love and actually mm -hmm. encouraged me and showed love to me and that's middle school high school mm -hmm. like uh, like you said a lot of people were ignorant at that time people don't know any better and mm -hmm. We have to give grace because systematic racism is a thing that we've all have has been ingrained in us for so long. And you don't get to un, you don't unlearn that very, very quickly. A lot of us unlearn that in college In college, maybe I was that girl. I was a yeah. chocolate princess. OK, okay. Mm -hmm. Literally, you know, <laughs> so it, there was a switch. And I think that switch happened when people when you get you you're around more people who are more educated, who have like experienced more and can see outside the lens mm -hmm. of systematic oppression systematic right. racism mm -hmm. and you know this desirability politics that we always talk about like there's a mm. lot of people out there that are black people that are educated and know better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and social we have to be too. able yes mm -hmm. and being media. able to yeah. have access to the culture to understand because i feel yeah. like a lot of the pushback came from i think it's like the fear of the unknown mm -hmm. like not understanding mm -hmm these people and their culture and they're different and they look similar, but you know, it's like mm -hmm. kind of standoffish. So I think with social mm -hmm. media, you've seen people trying African food on yeah. YouTube and social yep. media recently. Mm -hmm. So I feel like things like that have yeah. also helped. Yeah. Like on the music. And, and, uh, Can't forget the, the music. Side. And the Black Afro Panther. Beat. Yeah. Shout out to Black what Panther. Panther. <laughs> <laughs> what color yes, from? Black Panther. Black Panther. Afro Beats. Afro Beats. Pianos, all that. Rest in peace Chadwick Boseman. Yes. Yes. Talking about bridging the gap. Talk about, talk about, talk about how terrible those African accents are. Well, they were made up. They were made up accents. Wakanda is not a real place. No, but Wakanda is supposed to be in East Africa, right? It's supposed to be between not, Uganda and exist. South Sudan, nigga. but it's made up. I'm just but saying, it brought black that. people together. It did, right, right. Yeah. And it's I think beautiful. that's the thing. Like, I feel like, yeah, we could talk about all the things that happened, but at some point, we can be like, all right, we've talked about it, and we talk about it, and we talk about it, talk about. It. But at the end of the day, what can we do to like bridge the gap to understand each other so that we can find a common ground? So yeah. I hope this conversation today started it. We are out of time, and I'll let Sarah wrap us up. But Wait, we'll can just we end it with each thoughts. person like saying what they admire about? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm Vida. Um, and I love how African Americans just are so innovative and resilient. Like so much of what culture is around the world is African American culture. So mm. shout out to y'all. Oh. Yes. Okay. Real quick, say it loud. Black I'm and black and, and I'm proud. I'm black and I'm proud. I love us. I love us across the diaspora particularly in America, because I am an American. Look, y'all, we can do anything, anything we want to do. Mm -hmm. You just got to apply yourself. Not talking about no bootstrap stuff. We can do it mm -hmm. if you apply yourself. So my name is Ebony. You can find me online on TikTok at Ebony Sierra X or on Instagram at the.ketoqueen. And I just think that, yes, all of us black people all across the world, we are dominating social media mm -hmm. right now. And I think that it's amazing because there's so much money there and it's going to help all of us elevate our lives in ways that we have never been able to before because social media is just so new. So that's yeah. my thing. I just want to start off by saying with African-Americans, I love that they're always innovating and learning and moving and doing things doing new things, always creating new spaces that were never there before and just making it accessible for all of us Africans and just African, black Africans in general to fill up those spaces and be inspirational and um, be idols to others. So that's what I love about the African and black experience. And I just love us, y'all. Just love mm -hmm. us. Period. Um, for me, what I love about... Um, like the the African American experience um, is the fact that for people who've gone through so much mm. to um, to be so creative and so like have a like bubbly personality that's so infectious yeah. and to be and I I love stand up comedy my favorite stand up <laughs> comedians are black people you mm -hmm. know they like the you culture can speak to this 
Nigga, like, were you thinking what like, I was thinking? I was like, saying the same thing. I was like, to have such a great sense of humor <laughs> and make people laugh. Right. With coming from what you have gone through, yeah. they literally are the, right. the, the greatest you know? to ever do it. Yeah, exactly. African Americans have put. Look, I'm yeah. a stand up comedian. Let me tell you something right now. Mm-hmm. There's very few comedians who can do it like black people do. Like, mm-hmm. let's be honest with ourselves. Exactly. They understand how to make life and suffering bearable. Mm-hmm. Shout out to mm-hmm. Dave. Yeah, just laugh it off. Sh- and laugh mm-hmm. it off. Yeah. Shout out to everyone who's ever done their thing because y'all created this, y'all built this, and we will continue to advance as black people, specifically off of the backs of your work. Thank you, and let's keep doing our thing. We, as ladies of Sosa, um, I'll plug all of their social medias, but we were recently featured on Good Morning Texas. Yes. Yes. So that was a big win for us. If you haven't seen it, it is on our link tree. If you click our link tree, it's the first link if you want to watch the full interview. Yes. And I love all of your answers. Um, big shout out to all of the African Americans who watch our channel, who are, you know, plugged into our platform. It's amazing that we can actually resonate to the black diaspora in general. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, that's amazing. Um, and, you know, OK, who is the platform? Because I don't like that everything is about suffering with black people. Not everything is suffering not everything and is pain not and evil. suffering. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Comedians know how to make us laugh because we've suffered through much. We can we be happy for a little bit? Who's the who's the artist or somebody that has like persevered and showcased us when we're not? Nikki suffering? just said persevered, talking about suffering. What do you su- what do you persevere through? Beyonce. Not, oh, Beyonce. Beyonce. We give a shout out to Beyonce for mm-hmm. Black History Month. The original H. Yes. Hottie. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we're from Texas. Um, so. uh, mm-hmm. uh, Beyonce has been looking light skinned lately. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Right, cut that out. Cut, 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 cut that out. Cut that out. Brianna is do, light don't, skin. Do, don't, she don't, is light okay, she could give a shout Beyonce. out to. I mean, no, I not know. taking away because comedians, black comedians do like they know how to like reach out to us and we're the speak best. to us. Yeah, yeah. Sweet I get it. But who's someone that we can like put who do you give a shout out to for Black History Month? Black I mean, History obviously Month. we have like a musician, but I want to talk about Viola Davis. I love mm-hmm. her. I love Viola yes. Davis. Our actors and actresses. As far as the entertainment industry, black people have contributed so much to the entertainment industry. So I will yeah. just give all of them their flowers. Yeah. Angela Bassett. But, yes. Mm-hmm. Big yes. shout out to <laughs> Angela Bassett. <laughs> yes. The queen of Wakanda. Mm-hmm. Big, of course. Big shout out to the, uh, to the black filmmakers. Yes. 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 Who are shifting the narrative when it comes to us black Who's made it happen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, before we close the show, we want to give a huge shout out to a platform that we have collaborated with. They're called the African Collective. And we have spoke about Pan-Africanism. And this is literally like the internet hub for pan-africanism they they have new weekly newsletters they talk about um african history black history and black businesses wherever you are you can use that website to find anything restaurants um nail shops hair salons all of that so they are literally um being a hub for black people in the diaspora who just want to learn more about what's going on within the diaspora so i want to give a big shout out to the African Collective. And yeah, if you could, if you subscribe to their channel, it's $1 a month to have access to all of their newsletters. And they have written articles about us as well and the topics that we've covered, such as Pan-Africanism and colorism and such and xenophobia, all of the hard-hitting topics you can find there in depth. So make sure you guys subscribe and follow the African Collective. If you want to jump in there? And subscribe and follow Ladies of Sosa, guys. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and give us a five-star rating if you're listening to it on Apple or Spotify. And we will catch you guys in the, the next, next one. Episode. Happy Black History Month.